an EV space cluttered by electric scooters, Ultraviolet F77 Mark II stands out. It looks fast at standstill, and if reviews are to be believed, it's quite a scorcher on the racetrack. But can, you, can it be the only motorcycle in your garage? Can you buy one immediately and service wherever you are? To talk to us more about the ultraviolet motorcycle, we have with us the co-founders, uh, Narayan and Neeraj. Uh, first of all, gentlemen, welcome to ATV Profit. Thank Pleasure you. to be here. Thank, Thank you for having us over here. Yeah. First of all, what brings us to what brings us what bring you you to Bombay? Uh, specifically, you're actually based in Bangalore. So the um, interesting thing about today is we just unveiled the store at Pune mm -hmm. called the Ultraviolet Space mm -hmm. Station and just gone live, and I think that's the reason we are in Bombay right now. Okay. Uh, what is the idea behind? Uh, if uh, Neeraj, if you can tell us, talk to us about it. What is the idea behind the name Ultraviolet? Let's go there. Let's start right. where at the starting point itself. So this was in 2016, early 2016, when we were, you know, deciding on uh, what we're going to be working on, and it was very clear to us back then that you know what uh, we plan for and what we're doing is going to be. Uh, meant for international markets as well. It's not just a product for India. Mm -hmm. We were very clear back then that we are making India for the world. And from that perspective, the word violet was an interesting word, right? It, you had to roll your tongue to you know, pronounce it. It was the same pronunciation across 30 plus European languages, mm -hmm. right? And from there, the word, the word ultra sort of came in signifying the technology and sort of us pushing the boundaries of tech and innovation and you know, performance. And it came together to become ultraviolet in 2016. So what made you gravitate towards the performance space. Uh, we know specifically India is a small car and commuter two-wheeler market. Right. Uh, if you can talk to us a little about what made you choose the premium end, so to speak, and right. that to an electric motorcycle. Right, so actually it's very, that's a fascinating thing to learn for us as well, right? When we started the company, we sort of were looking at all of the different market segments, and one thing that became very clear was that the mid segment of two wheelers, right, which is, you know, all of these vehicles which are 200 cc and upwards, right, all the way to 600, 700 cc, actually comprise a large part of the market and they were not being addressed with, you know, sustainable solutions. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's not easy to solve that problem, which is why, you know, it's taken us several years. But essentially, it meant that, you know, there had to be certain aspirational value, the design, the performance, the safety aspects, the technology really had to step up to be mm -hmm. able to compete with IC engine vehicles. And that's what we have on offer with the Mark IIs today, right? But uh, the opportunity was always there. And it's not just in India, but all over the world. And this is the sort of mid-segment. Of course, in India, we call it premium, but mm -hmm. it's the mid-segment of motorcycles. Yeah. Uh, now, I just uh, talk to us about how difficult is it to build an electric motorcycle. Right. Everybody moves towards electric scooters first given the form right. factor. Right. Electric motorcycles, if I correct me if I'm wrong, it's actually a more slimmer format of motorcycle sure. or two-wheeler commute, commute. So how difficult is it to build an electric motorcycle that to a performance one? Sure. I mean, adding to what you said, I think the answer to this question lies in the technology, right? Mm -hmm. And more to do with the performance bands than purely the form factor. Um, today, Southeast Asia has made low-powered segments commodity in terms of batteries and motors of various sizes in the range of, say, 3 to 8 kilowatts. And once you go beyond that, right, and today we are operating in bands. The F77 starts at about 30 kilowatts, and the F99 platform goes up to 100 kilowatts. So the moment you get into those kinds of performance zones, the requirements on every single part of the machine, starting with the battery, the motors mm -hmm. goes up exponentially. We remember our formulas, the heat and losses are I square R mm -hmm. uh, formulas, right? So if your current goes up X number of times, the heat and losses go up a square factor of that, right? Okay. So the tech that you build for scooters or vis-a-vis -vis low powered vehicles mm -hmm. is not linearly scalable to higher performance segments. Okay. And I think that's where a core part of our eight years has gone into uh, developing systems that are capable of scaling across these power bands that we're talking about. Neeraj, uh, you have been so far been limited to Bangalore. Right. Why are you venturing it now? Because uh, I first heard about you guys in 2018. Right. I think you are in existence in 2016. Right. It's 2024. Right. You're venturing out of Bangalore now. Yeah, yeah. What's happening? So 2023 was when we first started to commercialize the vehicle. Uh, last March was when the first vehicles were delivered in Bangalore. 
And one important thing to keep in mind, and we are very cognizant of this, is that every customer and every vehicle matters, mm -hmm. right? In India, these are performance motorcycles, these are premium uh, motorcycles like you also mentioned, which means that the customer experience, uh, the customer delight is what matters to us. Mm -hmm. So for us, every bike that we've delivered, we've made sure that the experience is phenomenal, right? And now, having validated that is when we are scaling up our, um, you know, uh, business and now we're scaling it up. There's always been demand that way, right? The demand has been both international and domestic, and now is when we're scaling up across India and globally as well, uh, starting uh, in the last couple of weeks. So you have seen demand coming in in the last one year for electric motorcycles, performance focused? Absolutely. I mean, the kind of demand has been so overwhelming that you know, for us, it's always a catch up in terms of production and supply, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because people are curious, right? The kind of performance that you get with an electric motorcycle, the torque, and you know that rush is instant the moment you twist the throttle mm -hmm. and what we have done with the f77 mark ii's and with the f77s last year was very unique that way right we've got the performance right the price right you know the technology right the safety aspects it's the only motorcycle for example with dual channel abs till date right mm -hmm. there's last week was in india or yeah. globally as well so in india and mm -hmm. last week was the first time that another vehicle came into the picture which actually brought in dual channel abs and that that was priced at you know four or five times the cost of what the f77 mark ii's are at okay right. okay so narayan uh, we, we talked about the challenges that went sure. into building an electric motorcycle that to a performance oriented one uh, let's talk about the evolution of the f77 sure uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, two years ago you had the F77, you have now the Mark II version. Right. How do those two models tie up? What is sure. the evolution like, so to speak? So the F77 was launched, like Neeraj mentioned, in uh, March 2023. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've been working on a fast-tracked technology platform. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of advancements on performance and safety security features, which is brought on, on the F77 Mark II. For instance, we've got world-leading features, like 10 levels of region, We've got dynamic stability control, which coordinates between ABS and region. We've got four levels of traction control. And we've got a system that runs across the board from back end to the vehicle side called Violet AI, mm -hmm. which is computing data at 3,000 data points per second. Right? And okay. Now imagine as a consumer or a rider, the kind of feedback that you're going to be able to get from the brand on the efficiency, on the performance, and how to fine tune your riding behavior and patterns according to your use cases. Okay. Uh, you talked about the implementation of AI. Is it a first for an uh, electric vehicle or an electric motorcycle in I India? I think in the way that we are looking at it, definitely mm -hmm. for a first. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's a first. We've got it enabled on the app where you can unlock multiple features with regard to the product performance, data analytics, uh, diagnostics, as well as ties into our back-end systems. For instance, if there is something um, malfunctioning on the vehicles, we would perhaps know it before the customer is able to... Okay. Uh, realize what's okay. happening. Uh, and also you have been giving OTA updates from the get-go. I yes. don't think it has been a staggered launch, so to speak. Yes. You have moved from 77 to Mark II now. Yes. Uh, has it affected the range? Uh, the performance has gone up, yes. but has it affected the range as well? Is something that buyers should be wary about? It has <laughs> affected the range, but mm -hmm. on the positive way. Okay. The range has gone up from 307 kilometers <laughs> tested IDC to now 323 kilometers on the IDC cycles. Okay. And with the 10 level region, this number can even go up higher. Okay. So, Neeraj, you mentioned about the outsized demand that right. you're seeing and you're trying to catch up with your right. supply from the yeah. Bangalore yeah. facility. So, talk to us about your sales. Right. Uh, how were the July sales? The month is almost over. Yes, right. So, in terms of what's happening in the market, uh, in terms of demand, so especially now, since we've been active in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. So, in Bangalore, the vehicle sales for the F77 Mark IIs have actually been crossing over uh, to the level where we're getting over 5% of the market share for in the seg in the sports motorcycle segment, right? Okay. This covers both gasoline, petrol, and EV vehicles. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of demand that we're seeing. And mm -hmm. this is set to go uh, in a similar manner in other cities as well as and when we open the stores. And we have open demand in all of the cities that we are setting up. Uh, so you mean to there. say that if Bangalore sees uh, 100 sports motorcycles irrespective of the power chain getting yep. sold in the month of July, yep. five are yours. Yes, yes. That's, that's the stage the that you yes. have reached at this point yes, of time. Yes. And what are expectations after the Pune uh, experience center comes up? So in Pune, we already have quite a few uh, vehicles that have been delivered because you know people have been mm -hmm. taking these bikes out of Bangalore, mm -hmm. etc. And uh, as we open the store here, we're going to be seeing over 100 uh, bikes in, in the next couple of weeks mm -hmm. itself. 
uh, being delivered and all of these squadron members, as they, as they call themselves, mm -hmm. are going to be riding around the Mark IIs in Pune. That's 100 immediately. Yes, very about. much. Yes. Okay. Also, you have a very enviable cap table, so to speak. You have TVS Motor with right. a proper racing pedigree down right. south for sure. Right. Right. You have a South Indian superstar right. on a cap table. You have as well as uh, Zoho as well. So you have a very diverse mix in the cap table. But I want to focus on TVS. Right. So are there any synergies with TVS? What's this percentage stake that TVS owns in a company at this point of time? So I think as far as my memory uh, is correct, I think they hold close to 29% in the company. Okay. Uh, TVS has been a very strong partner with us since 2017 mm -hmm. when they first invested in the company. Um, and what we've seen is that all of our investors, right, who has joined us from the early stages, whether it's in 2016, Vishesh with Special Invest, DBS Motors, Zoho with both Kumar and Sridhar Vembu, and in the last round we had, uh, you know, XOR Capital as well as Qualcomm Ventures join in. All of them are coming with a sort of long-term mindset, mm -hmm. right, which is that we're building a product for global markets um, and we're building a global brand capable of, you know, taking on uh, all of the giants of the world. And I think that's what is exciting for everyone uh, on the cap table. Okay. Uh, let's talk a bit about the competition. We have TVS yeah. that you talked about, 29% yeah. stake. Because immediately the conversation moves to a crosstown rival of yours, if I come to you, uh, Narayan, sure. right now. A crosstown rival in Aether, which has a big backer in a traditional OEM, to, so to speak, in Hero. Sure. So how do you see the competition from an Aether Hero? Hero also has a global tie-up with Zero. Yes, sure. uh, Enfield has a Europe tie-up. We know Ola is going to launch an electric motorcycle, at least show something on the 15th of sure. August. Uh, how are you assessing the competition? Is it healthy? Is it cutthroat? Talk to us. Sure. I mean, to begin with, I mean, so far the last two years, we've been the flag bearers for performance electric okay. motorcycles. And uh, frankly, we are rather excited that, you know, the segment is bound to grow mm -hmm. with more players coming in. Mm -hmm. And uh, from our perspective, our learnings have been that, you know, for this segment, technology matters, performance matters, and the emotional quotient of Pride of ownership is a very strong aspect. Okay. So our advice to people coming into the segment would be that these three are important factors and and we are glad to, I mean, EV is still at a nascent stage. We see this more as a collaborative attempt to grow the market mm -hmm. and not yet competitive. Okay. So uh, you have uh, ambitious expansion plans. You want to go global. Uh, are you tapping Europe, uh, US? Which markets are you looking at? Yes. So the bikes were inherently built to scale globally, right? So mm -hmm. these motorcycles are being certified for European markets, for American markets. They're already getting certified? Yes. We've received most of the battery certifications. Actually, quite a few bikes have already moved out of India. Mm -hmm. And in the next couple of weeks, in we'll start. In the production stage? Yes. Okay. Yes, very much. So they've been bought by customers? Yes. Uh, okay. They've been delivered. They've been tested in Europe markets. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had multiple bikes on racetracks. We have MotoGP riders riding these bikes. Right, so all of this has been going on, and we're set to go live in Germany, Spain, France, uh, Portugal, uh, Turkey as well. And all of this has been happening over the last six months, and uh, we're on track to actually scale these up. Later in the year, we're looking at uh, the US and Japan as market for us, uh, with separate certification cycles for those two. Uh, how are you funding the expansion? So I think we are well capitalized that way, and of course, it is a capital-intensive mm -hmm. business, right? So we're you know always on in talks with uh, different investors. Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, what we have today, the, these vehicles have already been certified to some level, mm -hmm. and with, with the completion of the certifications, we'll be ready to ship out these vehicles to different markets. So you are not in talks for fresh funding? So no, these conversations are always ongoing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, it's a capital-intensive industry, and what we've also realized is that at Ultraviolet, what we've built over the last seven, eight years mm -hmm. is a very strong technology play right and now that we have got the validation in terms of customers and people love the products now is the time to really scale it up globally in terms of distribution and that's the that's what we were coming to right there's actual organic demand from across 190 countries for the motorcycles right so and this is not because we've done any marketing or anything of that sort this is organic demand based on word of mouth people talking about it themselves so we're trying to just get the bikes out there in the hands of people and that's that's our immediate focus so uh, do you still always want to remain a niche player or are you going to play in the mass market as well? I mean, um, if you look at the segments that we are catering to today, hmm. um, we'd be, Ultraviolet would be looking at 6 million vehicles out of a larger pool of 22 million vehicles, right? Okay. And this already forms... This is an annual number? 
Uh, yes. yes, this okay. is an idle number. And For India's sake? This is global market. Global, global market, market okay. mid-segment motorcycles. Six million units a year. Yes. Um, from a 22 million uh, yes, yes. market that is globally that is present. Yes. Okay. So yeah. we are looking at a significantly large market for okay. the foreseeable future. And mm -hmm. in our view, this is not niche. I think this is more of a focused play on mm -hmm. um, what our core strengths are, which is design, technology, performance. And I think the future of tech is also going to focus a lot on safety. Mm -hmm. So like I said, Mark II already saw incremental leaps in safety being added onto the vehicles and we'll double down on this moving forward as well. Okay, um, back to you. So uh, again, coming back to production, right. uh, what is your current installed production capacity in right. Bangalore? Right. Are you stepping up given the plans that you have to right. go global? Right. Yes, so the current production capacity we can scale uh, from 10,000 vehicles uh, annually that we have the capacity for. With the same plant, we can scale. Is 10,000 at this point of time? Yes, the current per capacity. Year? Per, uh, yes, per year. Okay. Per year, we can scale it up to 30,000 units, uh, having additional shifts uh, mm -hmm. with the current facility that we have. That's immediately. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Uh, in terms of forward-looking, what what the plans are? Of course, as we scale up, and because these are long lead times, right? We're mm -hmm. talking about 18 months to set up a new plant. Mm -hmm. As the demand scales, and as we scale across multiple cities and multiple continents. We will plan out the expansion plans for uh, production facility, and what we have today is the pilot plant uh, that can scale to about 30,000 units. 30,000 units immediately. Yes, yes. So in the next one year, a lakh units, 1.2 lakh units. I'd say uh, our focus, like I said, is very organic. Mm -hmm. This year we plan to deliver, get to about 5,000 vehicles to 10,000 vehicles, and the following year we're talking about getting to 30k vehicles mm -hmm. uh, with the current plant that we have. Okay. And the year that follows, we're looking at a larger scale of 100,000 units, okay. uh, including the global sales as well. All right. Uh, any plans? We know Ola has listed, uh, well, at least filed for a listing and will go, right. it'll go open its IPO on the 2nd of August. Right. It will list on the 9th of August. Do you have an IPO in the future? I think what we have is an exciting business. Okay. What we have is a, uh, you know, a, a fairly strong, you know, mm -hmm. profitable uh, venture that we're building out. You're profitable? Uh, from okay. a unit economics point of view, okay. I think we've built it out to be very strong from the get-go. Mm -hmm. The choice of segments, the choice of uh, markets, type of vehicles, mm -hmm. the willingness to pay from consumers, all of these have been factored in while making out, while making this, you know, uh, vehicle that we've built out. Okay. And from that perspective, we're building a very strong business. So there are multiple parts, one of them being the IPO. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see how, you know, Five some years? of these. Five years? I think shorter than that. That's shorter than that? Okay. Yes, very much. Okay. All right. Okay. For finally, a question to both of you. Are you both motorcyclists yourself? Yes, I am. Very, very much so. <laughs> I think I've, I've owned six bikes. He's owned five. Very nice. And, uh, <laughs> and I think that journey transitioned to electric um, five years back. But you never thought about moving into a traditional internal, com internal combustion engine? As a new business, as yeah. a new opportunity, I think uh, there are, you know, the market has already very, very good products when it comes to IC vehicles, mm -hmm. right? The, what was lacking was EV options that could really make so a difference. To plug that gap. And yes, that's exactly what we work on. I think plug that gap to start with and also validate that we can outperform IC engine mm -hmm. categories in multiple ways, not just the performance, but the ownership aspects as well. Mm -hmm. Our consumers today are saving 50,000 rupees per year okay. on an average of 1,000 kilometers a month, and that mm -hmm. is incredible. Mm -hmm. And what we usually talk about amongst ourselves in the company is, imagine a scenario in five years, your vehicle has paid you back, right? Mm -hmm. And whereas on the IC side, it's doubled its cost of ownership. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, but uh, do you think uh, that electric motorcycles will completely re uh, replace uh, ice motorcycles, so to speak, or is there a scope for coexistence going ahead? I think it's going to be a sort of matter of coexistence uh, over the next couple of years, but what we see is that eventually there will be a transition towards uh, cleaner options and also exciting options and we're seeing that electric can make that happen and we're seeing that we've seen that already happen in the case of tesla in certain markets mm -hmm. and we we can clearly see that's going to happen in the case of ultra Violet as well okay but you're seeing some hiccups as well towards ev adoption the, i mean yes the prices of the batteries are coming down right, sure. but uh, you're seeing that there's still limited adoption the moment the, your spending power is limited so I, those challenges do you think in india also because india so far we are seeing uh, EV volumes have kept on growing right. despite right. maybe a removal or subsidy. I'll come right. to that later. Right. Uh, but do you think uh, we will reach a inflection point, so to speak, that okay, it will become commonplace, electric motorcycles will become commonplace by the end of this decade? 
I think so. 100 percent. Yes. Okay. So one in every two motorcycles will be electric by 2030, if you say? Very much, very much. In fact, you know that inflection point we have already crossed that, right? Okay. If you remember, even three, as far as three years back or five years back, a lot of conversation was when will lithium-ion battery prices fall below 100 dollars per kilowatt hour? Hmm. We've crossed crossed below that point, hmm. right? And with that transition, now EVs are a economically viable alternative to IC vehicles. Right, so we're seeing that transition. Of course, you know, you can say, you know, is it going to be an organic growth? Is it going to be a forced growth? Mm -hmm. What we see and what we believe for electric motorcycles, because there's the emotional quotient, there's the performance quotient. It's not just, you know, the cost of uh, ownership or the economics. Because these other factors come into the play, uh, it is going to be an organic transition and not a forced one uh, mm -hmm. for the market to adopt electric motorcycles. And that's how we've been building the business as well. Okay, uh, how will this industry look like? Uh, we know that in the commuter two-wheeler space, sure. we have scooters and motorcycles. Sure. Uh, the trend that we are seeing right now is that we have electric scooters doing the commuter job. Sure. And there are, uh, at least in the ice space, you have performance motorcycles still selling higher. Sure. There was a decline in commuter motorcycles, sure. but electric scooters have gone up. So do you think electric scooters become your commuters in the future? and the electric motorcycles actually hold on to the performance end of this particular spectrum? I mean, very well put, and those are the two advantages of an electric powertrain. Mm -hmm. One is cost per kilometer, and the other is on the instant acceleration mm -hmm. and the performance, right? Okay. So, like you said, we see both of this panning out, mm -hmm. and um, on the motorcycle side, we are one of the only players globally mm -hmm. um, to meet all requirements on performance, design, technology and price points, right? Okay. Most often you find players not meeting two of these four variables. Mm -hmm. I think we've got all of it on track and motorcycles inherently need to be exciting, mm -hmm. right? The whole purpose of motorcycles beyond the rationale of going from A to B is also to evoke that sense of adrenaline and excitement and freedom in a rider. And those are the exact qualities that we would want to double down on and get through from our tech perspective as well. Something I missed asking you earlier, what is the localization levels that you're seeing in your vehicle at this point of time? Uh, right. Because a lot of components may have to be imported. What's, right, what's, right. What's the, so the good part about? actually uh, in our case and you know from, from the two-wheeler industry also is that India is a very mature market when it comes to two-wheelers, right? So we've got this entire ecosystem with, you know, some of the largest companies in the world based out of India, and the ecosystem have, have evolved around them, right? So when it comes to motorcycle parts or two-wheeler parts, most of these things other than, let's say, the microcontrollers within the electronics, the magnets within the motors, or the cells, right? right? All of, only, these are the only three parts that typically come from outside India. And uh, I think everything else on the motorcycle um, or a scooter for the, or any two-wheeler for that matter is available here. And for those three components also, what we're seeing is that there is a plan over the next couple of years uh, mm -hmm. where domestic production will kick off. And we're hopeful and you know, we're starting to see samples of some of these things come about as well. So what's your localization level at, in terms of percentage at this point? I think in terms of value, uh, we're already over 50% of the value is being domestic uh, mm -hmm. from domestic production with this battery cells coming from outside India currently. Uh, a big being the sizable part of the imports uh, on the vehicle. Final question, uh, right. what do you make of the government's support to the EV ecosystem? We have PLI schemes, we have subsidies, uh, are you a beneficiary of that? Uh, so I think we are a beneficiary of the lower GST, for mm -hmm. example the 5% GST on electric vehicles, I think we are definitely benefiting from that, our customers are benefiting from mm -hmm. that and we would continue to uh, hope that you know that remains in place. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from this, I think for us specifically, the import benefits also will start to make sense very soon. Okay. Right? Because we are the only company that will be shipping vehicles globally mm -hmm. and not just you know to um, other countries. We're talking about you know first world countries mm -hmm. at you know significantly you know increased price points as well. So all of this starts to make sense for us uh, and I think the government support there is, uh, is commendable. Okay, finally. It's a sports motorcycle. Right. Uh, any other form factors are you, is it in the pipeline? An ADV sure. or a naked uh, street bike? Sure. So Ultraviolet is, is a technology company in the mobility space. We, of course, are, uh, have plans for multiple products, but mm -hmm. I think the near future, our focus is going to be on expansion both India and uh, overseas markets. And in terms of products, so are you still going to be a sports bike company or are you going to explore an adventure motorcycle or a naked roadster, so to speak? Right. So, so near future, uh, the focus is on the F77, but mm -hmm. I think as we move, step into multiple uh, geographies, the mm -hmm. portfolio also should parallelly start expanding. All right.
Uh, thank you so much, gentlemen, for talking with us. I think we covered, I mean, from the very beginning to your global expansion plans. Thank you, viewers, for tuning in. This is Tushar for NTV Profit.